This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, and we're here until midnight tonight on the Rambo. Yes, and here I am. Oh, wait a minute, got to do this. There we go, turn on the lights. I always forget to do something these days because I'm getting old, okay? Anyway, turn on the lights. Uh, I had a big problem tonight. Well, I'll, ex- I'll explain it uh, to Phil, because Phil's on with us now. Uh, you know, he does this every Every Tuesday night, we inflict him upon you. Let me see here if I can uh, uh, figure out how to bring him up. There we go. There you go. Hello, Phil. How are you? You're in Washington tonight, huh? Yeah, well, you know, I figure Biden's not there. He's he's always on vacation. So What do you mean uh, he's on vacation? How's he on vacation? He's hiding at Camp David. No, he's not. Yeah? No. Do you know where he was today? Uh, no. Where was he today? New Jersey and uh, New York. Oh, Look, looking at so, the flood damage. Yeah, but he doesn't know. Uh, didn't he say that the tor- uh, that there's no more tornadoes? They call them something else, and it, or, or they're in Iowa. Uh, he didn't know where he was. No, 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 no. Why? Why can't you just give him a little credit for something? You know. Why? I mean, I was giving Marjorie a bad time today about uh, Biden by saying that, you know, he could do better off by staying in Washington and getting some, you know, money passed so these people can get their lives back in order. But instead, he's down there taking photo opportunities with Chuck Schumer and our governor, what's her name? I have, I can't remember her name. Hokum or uh, something. Uh, uh, Hokel, Hokum. Hokum. Yeah, something like that. You, know, you you grow up with a name like that, you really have to fight as a kid. Well, I don't know what, what her, I forget her name. I really do, I, you know. Uh, and I'm afraid because I'm going to go to my neurologist and he's going to ask me again, who's the governor of the state of New York, and I, can't, I don't even know her name. I'm sorry, I can't remember it. Yeah, it, it's like hokey or hokum yeah, or yeah, yeah. something Something and, like and that. And she, she lost me the minute she said, well, I'm not going to rule this state by press conference. Yeah. Why? You like the press conferences? Well, yeah, I love those press conferences. Love them. Uh, all right. Uh, just, uh, there's uh, some other stuff. Uh, well, let's, uh, do we have to get into it immediately? Yeah, Shona Tova. Uh, yeah, have, yeah. What year is this in the Jewish calendar? I don't know. We, we Jews live in the future. Uh, yeah. We're, you know, we're like, uh, a, we're like a Marvel superhero. We all live in the future. Fifty-seven, eighty-two. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Was, uh, the rabbi gave me a calendar last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I I belong to a group that supplies um, uh, muscle, of, muscle. Uh, no, so, yeah, muscles. Uh, safety to uh, chabads and synagogues and churches. Mm-hmm. So pray in peace without having to worry that their doors are going to be breached by bad guys. Well, were they? No. Okay. I, well, the only then. bad guys at the door were me. <laughs> yeah. So, but you got a free calendar, huh? I got a free calendar. I see. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was. I didn't get home till uh, like eleven o'clock last night. I was tired. You know, so I mean, problem with uh, with uh, with the Jewish uh, New Year uh, mm-hmm. is uh, that uh, you know I keep still writing fifty seven eighty one on my checks. Yeah. No. I I, I get it. Yeah. Well, that, that's. Because you owed fifty-seven dollars and eighty-one cents, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, today was a shitty day. God damn it! You know, you know what I do? I'm, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. I'm a moron. Okay, let me explain you're this. Liberal. I mean, that goes hand yeah, in well, hand. You're going to go ahead with the whole idea that I'm a moron, but I'm, I am. And I'm going to tell you w- why I'm a moron. Okay. Okay. So I haven't on my. Uh, computer here my mac it's mm-hmm. still mojave it's still two o- operating systems earlier okay which mac is it 
It's the Mac Pro. Oh, it's not the, it's not the Mac Mini or any of those. No, no, no. But uh, you know, I could have I could have put the. Uh, but they're already up to Big Sur. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. What what do I have? Uh, just uh, about this Mac. Uh, I have Big Sur eleven point five point two. The reason I have never gone to Big Sur yeah. is that everything works all right here. Right. All right. Everything works all right here, and if I go to Big Sur, it's going to take me weeks before I get the whole thing sorted out right. You know? Well, it's been a while, so some of the things that do don't work when you first convert right, right, working by now. Yeah, that's like uh, being Jewish. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so today I figure, you know, I haven't upgraded the, uh, the latest... Uh, uh, they, they they got a new uh, Netscape, which I don't care about really. Eight? Not Netscape, but what, what's the thing? It's Safari. Uh, yeah, yeah, is what they have. They had an upgrade on that. I didn't care about that, but they did have an upgrade uh, uh, on the uh, security system. So I figured, ah, hey, what the hell? You know, I won't. I'm not going to upgrade to Big Sur, but I'm going to upgrade those two little things. Okay. So I just going to you know to begin with with Max. Let me tell you this, folks. They take forever to upgrade. It could be a minor upgrade, like just some, you know, security issues and an upgrade to Safari. And how long does it take? An hour. You know that. Uh, you uh, you gotta uh, do this upgrade. Did you upgrade your MySpace? What? MySpace. Did you upgrade MySpace? No. Huh? No. no. Still using the old one? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, point was that uh, I so I, I upgraded those two very simple things, but they take forever. So I go to the other room and they come back, and I have a thing here called a stream deck. This is the thing that I use to like uh, you know change the picture like that, folks. See, I just with the push of a button, okay. And I have certain buttons here. I have a button for the 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 uh, the panel, I which you're on right now. I have one for video one, two, and three, and I have split screen and a couple other things here. All You're right? doing with a with a uh, program, not with a mechanical. Well, it's a mechanical. It's a, it's not mechan. It's mechanical. These oh, are it is. yeah. These are tactile buttons that I hit. Okay, uh, and they're all lit up with the various things that I want to have lit up, and it looks good. Okay, I start all my stuff with it and so on. Well, I upgrade, and I come back, and the thing doesn't work. The stream deck is deader than a doornail. All it shows me is my, I have a, uh, like a picture I've put on there when it's not running. Okay. You didn't upgrade to, uh, to Big Sur, you just upgraded. No, I just upgraded two simple little programs, Safari, an upgrade to Safari, and an upgrade to uh, the, uh, but anyway. It doesn't work. No, because you don't have uh, Big Sur. So now I ha no now I have to call the the Stream Deck people. And they have no idea what it is. So then they send me something that I put on, and it makes up a program that re does a reading for them, so they can look at everything when I mail it back to them. Right. And it's all this right, and I can't get that to work. And then my cameras here aren't working. This used to be this used to be camera two, rather. Oh wait a minute, that is camera. Uh, th this used to be camera two, and this is camera one. It, it, anyway, they reversed themselves, and yeah. I had a hard time getting those back online. I mean, and then all of a sudden the the, the stream deck starts lighting up again. You know, it's just it was just a clusterfuck here, and I was getting ready to say, ah, look, I'm not going to do a show tonight. I don't need to do a show tonight. I'd rather just take the night off and not worry about any of this crap. You, you know? considered that Marjorie is going into the back of the computer and switching uh, USBs uh, in the back just to mess with you? I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> I, it, don't don't put it past her. Yeah, but anyway. So now my two, my my where this this used to be what this used to be the. Uh, the uh, what do you call it, camera the just live one. camera and this one over here which you can't see 
was uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? zoom camera so you know all these things and I just went through this took me like two hours to solve and it solved part of it solved itself all of a sudden this thing goes on you know it was like it was probably tapping its foot waiting to go on until I was so irritated that it went okay now we can go on you know? finish the install huh you finished the install and no uh, the you... install was finished when you're when you come back to full running it but it threw everything off it threw the cameras off it threw the, the you know and then i got to reset the cameras so that they you know they're, they're they're right so they don't overflow here otherwise you get too much of back the back of the room there thing well i had a i had a similar thing happen with my phone system yeah well, I have a voice over IP phone at the store yeah. and uh, everybody's voicemail worked fine except mine. People would mm -hmm. call and they get this recording that said or an announcement that said uh, enter the code to leave a voicemail. Mm -hmm. People would say code. Yeah. And uh, so finally I had uh, my friend uh, who's very computer savvy uh, call up Verizon, work it out and they fixed it. Then my friends are telling me that the voicemail on my cell phone, which is also Verizon, was doing the same thing. So today he had to fix that. You know how they fixed it? Huh. They said, take the SIM card out, then put it back in and start the phone again. Hmm. That's, that's what it took to, uh, to get my voicemail back. You know, I'm, I'm getting too old for this stuff, I think. I think that's what it is. I'm just getting too old for it, and maybe it's time for me to cash it in. You know? Hmm. Complicated, you know. Huh? I mean, you set up a television studio uh, at, rather than just a podcast with some video. Uh, it's pretty complicated, and the you know the more uh, sticks that or matchbooks that you stack on one another, the easier it is for it's them. It's like to a play. big game of Jenga. Right. Exactly. You know, uh, but it, it, it's just I just I'm tired of it. You know. And I'm tired of the show, I think. You know, I'm tired of the fact that, uh, oh, we got 27 people watching right now. What's that? You know, am I doing a show for 27 people? Well, Is that yeah, it? That might have been what the serious show was. It might have been 22 people. Well, we don't, we never know it's serious. You can't tell, you know. Right. I mean, so, H Howard assumes he has millions listening to him, and it may just be 30, you well, know. Making millions. Uh, it, it, you know, I'm sure he has a pretty decent sized audience, oh, sure. uh, but, uh, you know, he's, he's broadcasting worldwide. Uh, they're, they're paying him a lot of money. Oh, talking about a lot of money, uh, Rachel Maddow, 30 million. Well, I, am, I, I know that, but I just heard a report and I didn't hear the whole thing. Maybe you did that I guess they reported incorrectly that she, is she not getting 30 million uh, you know was that a, a hoax or I don't know let me look at my uh, let me look at um, I didn't hear the whole up. story but I, I heard that this now. issue over uh, the reporting on this Rachel Maddow money okay here it is net worth no how rich is Rachel Maddow who are the highest paid news anchors what is Rachel Maddow's salary uh, this was uh, uh, some uh, uh, MSNBC to pay Rachel Maddow thirty million a year. It doesn't say anything about her not getting thirty million a year. Right. Well, so, you know, I only uh, I, I heard it in the periphery. You know, no, it, all all they said is she's going to work less. Oh, to make more. Yeah, well, that's the American way. I guess so. You know, I you know, I is she worth it? To some. Uh, you know, uh, I guess the MSNBC, they don't have a lot of talent. Uh, why do you think that she was going to get offers elsewhere or it that may have been to keep her from going somewhere else? Yeah. That could have well been the deal. You know, what made her worth that kind of money? What made her worth that kind of money is maybe somebody else wanted her and were willing to pay her a lot of money so they paid her an equal amount of money to keep her hmm. it's cheaper to keep her yeah <laughs> uh, I, I don't know that her ratings beat out Hannity or those people uh, I heard that Gutfield was beating out uh, this is a Fox guy and, and not a very 
good or interesting uh, commentator, but his show was beating out all the nighttime shows. You know, uh, I don't I don't watch the nighttime shows anymore uh, since Johnny Carson left. But <laughs> well, you know, you know, Johnny Carson every night used to have thirty million people watching him. At me, yeah. Do you know how many people watch the Tonight Show now? Uh, not very many because Gutfield is beating them out. Yeah, but two million. Yeah, about two million. Have you ever seen that Greg Gutfield show? I think he's the guy who did their comedy show. Right. Yeah. There, yeah. There was that comedy show. I I heard of him, but I never heard of tons of people watching him. You know. But what I heard, uh, or or, I don't know exactly where the uh, that the Gutfield has more viewers than uh, any of the late night shows. So tonight. Well, show. that could well be Fox uh, putting out that message. And it's not necessarily true. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I heard it on Fox or some other thing. It was probably Fox. Well, what's his name again? Greg Gutfield. Just G-U-T? Yeah, F-I-E-L-D. F-I-E-L-D. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. What what happened here? Damn you. I can't I, everything goes wrong with me today. You know? Uh, it's just getting to me. It's getting to me. Uh well, let me see here. Under degrees out here. Gut field. Gut field. Okay. First of Greg. Oh, gut yeah. field ratings. Okay. Audience summary, Gutfield ratings, reviews. I don't know where this is or where it came from. But um, Fox Channel scores 94 of the top 100 cable telecasts. I don't know. Uh, Gutfield scores 22,000 more viewers. He's now the new king of late night television after scores of 20, 220K more. Than viewers in Colbert's Late Show. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, you know, Gutfield is not that entertaining. Uh, it could be that he follows, you know, like the other guys. Hannity. H Hannity. Yeah. And he gets a spill over audience because I think Hannity's audience is bigger than two hundred and twenty. Yeah. Yeah. So he may just be. You know, getting the spillover. That's yeah. possible. It was interesting that uh, that he was uh, that his ratings were that high because the commercials that I watch on Fox now mm -hmm. uh, it used to be you know a little bit more mainstream. Now you got you don't have the My Pillow guy, but you do have these uh, vitamins mm -hmm. uh, where uh, you get fruits and vegetables, and and they're bombarding you with that. Uh, there's a couple of couple of national things not much but for the most part it's fruits and vegetables or uh, gold uh, and silver and uh, uh, a few other a few other things but I, I don't see the advertising that they used to get yeah uh, you know but uh, I just uh, just got my chat got in the wrong place <laughs> pop out chat participants time and I don't all of this is just it's all screwing up on me you know yeah. going to come up with something new and mm -hmm. if you are, me, are the, am I going to come up with something new no I might just stop yeah then what are you going to do nothing so you got all that equipment you're going to do nothing with it yeah right I sell it yeah yeah get rid of it why not what good is it to me I mean, what? I'm doing this every night. I get uh, maybe, like last week at one point, I was, did pretty well on one show. I can't remember what show that was. Uh, and um, uh, But basically, I get about, I get about 200 people a night last week wow. throughout the day. No, that's not a lot. I used to get uh, 500. Uh, where? On, on GabNet? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that because people are going outside, 
they're not trapped inside with the you know the, the COVID scare and all these other things that yeah but these may... were numbers I was getting before COVID oh. you know and I uh, and I'm just uh, why am I doing this why what's well, the reason I mean, you know why am I knocking my head against a wall in, uh, now six years seven years you've been doing this right the seven years six yeah the seventh year yeah and you know I've pretty much participated almost the whole time yeah I would say you know that uh, a very nice guy called me up the other day said he listened to the show mm -hmm. he owns some buildings in Berkeley and Oakland and he says he needs floor covering uh, I actually may be getting a job <laughs> because of GabNet. Mm. And he says he, he do, loves. Do I get a finder's fee or anything like that? It's in the mail. Oh, it's in the mail. Okay. Because yeah. you've been getting all those GabNet checks. That's that's true. Don't tell anybody else. They'll get jealous. They'll get jealous that you've been getting all those GabNet bucks. They say yeah. GabNet bucks right on them. Yeah, I, I know. It's. Um, there, uh, we used to have a guy uh, that was a very colorful guy uh, who would do our buying for our co-op, mm -hmm. and his name was Sandy Mishkin, and he was such a tough buyer that the, the reps used to, you know, just just sweat going into his office, and he, uh, his, uh, we used to get uh, uh, when you go to the convention, you were able to buy TVs and, and stuff you, you'd get little script mm -hmm. and they were called Michigan bucks and so that's where I came up with the idea of gabnet bucks uh, was uh, you know uh, plagiarizing the Michigan buck idea and uh, but I got tired of uh, getting uh, TV sets and uh, uh, those uh, those uh, earphones I had the red ones what were they called beats mm -hmm. uh, those sunglasses all, all sorts of junk uh, now I just get T-shirts for the guys, but uh, Michigan Bucks was, uh, you know, where uh, where the idea for Gabnet Bucks came from. Yeah. So um, um, anyway, so you know, I mean, I just go, why am I doing this? What, what what's the reason? Now, you know, I'm sitting here right now and I'm looking, waiting for people to line up to be on the show. Once you say goodbye, and there's nobody. Huh. Nobody. Zero. Zilcho. You know what? What? So why am I doing this? Well. I, uh, I I understand maybe people have to realize that they need to get online or in the queue uh, before uh, well you know, it's very disheartening and then the last week I think maybe we had five people a night tops you know yeah uh, and I could say well it was Labor Day week you know the, the people it slows down and everything but uh, right now I don't see anybody there so why the well, fuck am I doing this show? It's a casualty of Trump, you know? Well, uh, well, I mean, I have to admit that when Trump was around, the show was more exciting. Because, you know, but, but it was kind of bad excitement, you know? Yeah, ne negative, negative uh, input. You know? Yeah, negative, you know, I mean, if all you're going to do is argue about this guy for four years, that can get a little exhausting. Yeah, but I agree with uh, with uh, Will Durst, who you'll hear it when I finally play the interview I did the other day with him, when he says that you know his big problem is is that Biden is boring. You know he's yeah. not even good for comedians. You know Trump was. Yeah. Trump gave comedians a lot to talk about, but uh, and jokes to make, but that was it. You know, so. Yeah, I understand. And that's that's why stand-up comedians are lucky that uh, there's uh, the clubs really aren't open. Uh, in in the listen, kind of uh, um, uh, uh, Will's lucky he got a stroke when he did. <laughs> really, terrible. I'm serious. Yeah. You know, you know, he had a different kind of thing. He he used to do a show with uh, Willie Brown, and uh, and uh, they. You know, they they would talk about the politics of the day, and and I, I think it was you know. Well, he only did that once in a while. He had done a radio show for about six months with Willie Brown. Yeah, that's uh, a job actually that I was offered and I turned down. 
Really? Uh, yeah, the, uh, my old boss, uh, Ed Cramp, uh, said, uh, we're looking for somebody to do a morning show. You know, just a casual conversation, expecting maybe I would pick up on it. And he said, we're willing to pay a lot of money. And I'm going, well, if I, if I know of anybody, I'll let you know. Because I'm thinking, I'm at Sirius XM, and that's a walk in the park, you know. I'm, I could have that job for the next 20 years. I was wrong. But had I taken that job, I, I probably would have been out of the business much earlier uh, than I was, you know. So Nine years in any radio job is a long time. Well, yeah, 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 but you know, I uh, there there are people who stay at radio stations for thirty years. Yeah, they're few and far between now, but back then, no. But I mean, I read the I read the the showbiz news, the radio news, uh, all access and stuff, and every day somebody's getting fired and somebody's getting hired. Yeah, you know, and it's just like the turnover is incredible, just yeah. incredible. So. Did they yeah. give you anything for being nominated uh, for the uh, Radio Hall of Fame? You know, did they, did they a give you anything? A plaque or a... They did? No. Nothing, no, huh? no, nothing. Nothing. They just used me. Yeah. Basically, that's what happened. They used me. And they used all the other people there, too. And, you know, the winners shouldn't have won. They were not... Uh, they. they, they were not uh, significant in aiding and moving forward the medium. Yeah, I, I, I was... And I'm not I'm, saying that because they won, folks, or because I'm bitter. I just think that it, the fix was in. You know, well, I know that at least one of the guys who was on the committee uh, was a guy who uh, worked for the group, the broadcast group that they belonged to. Yeah. You know? Uh, think that they uh, were able to fix the vote by getting their listeners uh, oh yeah I'm sure that that had a lot to do with it I'm sure they got their listeners to you know write in and vote 20 times and do whatever it took okay but that's unfair to do that because or even take that into consideration because I don't have a radio program on the air right now Sally Jesse Raphael doesn't have a program on the air right now we can't compete with that if you're going to make it a popularity contest. But if you're not going to make it a popularity contest, but you're going to say, here's who we're inducting into the Radio Hall of Fame, you know, yeah. I mean, they just, they just uh, at, at the 100th anniversary of radio or something, decided to initiate about 30 other people into the Broadcast Hall of Fame. And they finally got around to uh, Barry Gray. Well, Barry Gray has been dead for 30 years. Would have been nice if they had given it to him while he was still alive, and and he certainly deserved it. And they yeah. never still haven't gotten around to Don Sherwood. Uh, but uh, was John Don Sherwood local? Oh only? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in those days, you were all stations were local. All people were local, you know. Well, uh, another topic is uh, my gym. Uh, they do you know what a dunk tank is? Uh, where they put you in and they see how much body fat you have. Well, I, they, I, I don't know about that. No. Oh, uh, this trailer comes by and it's got this tank in it, and you you get in a pair of shorts and you you get in the tank. You let all the air out of your lungs and you sink down to the bottom of the tank. And the amount of water that's that's displaced, they can tell you how much body fat you have. And now I weigh two eighteen. Uh, I have seventy two pounds of body fat. I am thirty one percent fat. Uh, well, I'm to about two eighteen, two twenty, yeah. but I, uh, you know, and I have a little bit of fat on me. But uh, huh, six something. What? Huh? You're six. I'm six first. feet tall. Yeah. How tall are you? Five eight. Five, eight. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not a leprechaun, but I'm close. <laughs> you know? Hey, listen, there are two people waiting to come on. Do you mind if I have them join us here? Yeah, okay, absolutely. let me just do it so they don't have to wait. Okay, and it would be uh, a Vernon Nunn, and uh, and there's Jeff. Okay, here comes Vernon. He's or as he's better known, Ann Nunn, uh, or Anonymous, 
No, something like that. There was a movie uh, that I think it was a Clint Eastwood movie where the uh, uh, the, the villain uh, used the name No No One, uh, you know N N O and O N E. Uh, do you remember which movie that was? No. It was one of the Clint Eastwood cop movies. No. Yeah. What Clint Eastwood cop movie? There were well, a ton of Clint Eastwood cop movies. I love those Cl uh, Clint Eastwood cop movies. Yeah, they were okay. They hey, were okay. Uh, I'm watching, uh, what's the uh, program? Uh, Blacklist. Uh, I'm on to the third season. Hmm. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I thought it was kind of lame. Really? Yeah. I, I'm enjoying it. It's keeping, it's piquing my interest. Yeah, no. Um, Oh, here we go. Here comes Alan. I guess he decided to join us tonight. And Tony is joining us. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, hello, Tony. Hey. How are you? Was it? Oh, Biden was in my area about 10 minutes away. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. he wasn't that far. I think he was in Woodside where, that, where the family died, where they got flooded in the illegal basement. Yeah, well, I'm glad he decided to come and hang out and, you know, see everybody. Why isn't he in Washington getting money passed, you know, yeah. instead of these PR trips that he's making? I always hate it when presidents do that. You know, I was shocked he came, actually. Louisiana get hit hard? Yeah. And that's oh, yeah. He went down to Louisiana, too. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what he's saying. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting. I don't think people are going to be very happy with it. He's saying that maybe they shouldn't build back well, in the is that are low-lying and are getting hit because of climate change. Well, that's kind of hard to do in New Orleans. Well, because of the French Quarter and well, things like that. Well, it's because everything is low-lying in that, you know, and, and it has always had that problem. Why do, that's why they built the levees in the first place. What he's saying is probably going to be unpopular with those people that live in those areas, but it's maybe not a bad idea that, uh, you know, if you're going to rebuild why keep rebuilding and then every few years you get hit again? Uh, you know. I, well, know. I think we should do something about global warming. You know. Climate change. Yeah. Climate change, global warming, whatever you want to call it. I mean, Don, with the windmill. You know. Uh, yeah, it, no, but I mean, it, 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 you know that that's your big problem. We've been warning about it for years, and a, a lot of your pals have gone, "Oh, there's no such thing as global warming." I, I let's say everybody in America uh, gets on board and says. Let me put it this way, and I I know you probably hate them, but ninety eight percent of the scientists in the world, am I right on this, Vernon? All pretty much agree on global warming. Yeah. 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 Except they call it climate change because global warming has a, a different connotation to some of the right wingers. Oh, okay. So they yeah they, you, you, they hold a snowball on on the house floor and say. Well, how could we have global warming if it snowed yesterday? No, Vernon, uh, 30 years ago, they were saying that the planet is cooling. And then they were saying that uh, uh, the ozone... I never heard that. ...ozone was evaporating. I never heard that. I never heard that. I never heard that. Yeah, they, you, well, know, you were the only one who got the memo on that one. Really? <laughs> you know, scientists, scientists did... Uh, on one thing, Phil said, scientists were concerned about the ozone hole down in Antarctica and that's the reason that they got rid of a lot of these fluorocarbons that they were using as propellants now but there is a lot of uh, uh, countries that use uh, things that uh, would be uh, bad for uh, the climate uh, you know China uh, Malaysia I mean there's there's a ton of countries that are creating uh, India um, China and, is doing everything it can to get away from the way they have been uh, and becoming more responsible where climate change is concerned. So why not fight the, uh, the, for climate change in these areas? No, but they are doing it in China. No, not doing yes, it. Yes, they are. Well, don't tell, don't, you can't just wipe it away by saying, no, they're not doing sure. it. No, they are doing it. You know, because it's it, it, the Chinese won't do anything if it isn't to their benefit, and this is to their benefit. Uh, I, I, um, I don't get that. 
uh, from uh, what do you mean otherwise these art of these artificial islands they've been building in the South China Sea would be flooded uh, what do you mean oh because uh, you the, the Chinese have been building artificial islands out in the South China Sea so that they can claim more of the South China Sea as their territorial waters and if if they didn't do something about the the rising tides and everything they would just flood their own islands that they're making do these islands float no 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 they're islands phil yeah, well they could be floating islands no they're not floating oh. islands yeah. <clears throat> well i I see that there's a lot of countries. You know, it's that, funny. It's funny, but Alan actually is, has a look on his face like you just farted. <laughs> when Alan and I were talking about that today. You know that you can't fart. If you fart, you you, you can have a problem. Especially you turn if, you turn fifty. Never trust a fart. But uh, I'm, I just look at all of these countries where they have all of this uh, pollution, and even in South America. And, you know, they're blaming the U.S. for, uh, you know. Well, we are a huge country, and we have a huge amount. Wait a minute, let me finish. Mm -hmm. We have a huge amount of uh, carbofluorin and whatever that we put out with, more than a lot of other countries. I mean, you go down to some of the South American countries, they're poor countries. They can't afford the kind of technology that we have or the kind of stuff we put into the air. We're, uh, we're a very big country, and we are one of the biggest there is a percentage, isn't there, Vernon, that's been out there about what percentage of, of uh, uh, g g g aiding cl climate? I can't talk tonight. Aiding yeah, I think, I think, I think the uh, the thing you're searching for is that the United States is one of the largest burners of hydrocarbons in the world. Okay, except for the ozone layer getting rid of that one of the things that they did a big thing that was eaten into the ozone was refrigerant uh, the refrigerant 12 and refrigerant 22 which was auto home and central air mm -hmm. uh, refrigerants were chlorofluorocarbons and they changed yep. to the newer stuff which is that they threw a hydrogen atom in there and it's hydrochlorofluorocarbon say that three times quick anyhow it's supposed to be not depleting the ozone and China was a big producer of chlorofluorocarbon, CFC for short, and uh, they changed over. So good for them. Yeah. I remember driving around LA where you couldn't see any mountains. It, it was just uh, filthy. And now, you but know, the years- When was that, Phil? In the 70s. In the 70s. You know how many years ago that was? That's 50, 50 years ago, Phil. So in 50 years... In 50 they, years, they've cleaned a lot of that up. And so, you know... New I, York. New York, you used to get to a point where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. I'm, I, when I came back here, the air is clear. You know, I can yeah. look out my window every day and not see smog. Not see... But now California has wildfires. Now well, Cal the, 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 the worst air pollution we've had here in the last couple of years was because of the wildfires in California. Aren't you guys ship us some of your water? I didn't move to California until the early 70s. Uh, I don't remember uh, if we had wildfires back then, didn't we? No. Not like this. Not, not as often. Not, not as often. Not as big. This is this is also an effect of climate change, Phil. Yep. According to your buddy, Phil, it's only because they weren't uh, raking the, the, floor, the floor of the forest enough. Yeah, well, that, it's true. Well, he, well because <laughs> Donald Trump is a major scientist, you know. Uh, he, well, he was. He, he, he was going to change I'm laughing the direction. my ass off. He was going to change the direction in 2017 of a tornado or a storm where he was near Florida in the south, and he drew the path with one of those felt pins on a chart. And, of course, it wasn't Sharpie. anywhere near that. That was funny. <laughs> well. It shows how the smartest man in the world thinks. Yes, he and he is. Uh, you know, I um, I was talking earlier. Uh, I don't necessarily want to get off this climate change thing, but I, I'm going to a gym, and uh, I'm really feeling good. It all gets back to Phil. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. 
Uh, well, well I that, wanted means, to... that means you could be dead any day now because everybody oh. I know who works out eventually is, is, has all kinds of problems. I work out every Tuesday. I help build a house for Habitat. Well, that's different. That's a different that's kind great. of exercise. That's great. That's good job. Good job, Vernon. Yeah, but that's a different kind of exercise you're getting there. Uh, I'm a vendor for Habitat. Uh, I put in their carpet uh, for uh, several uh, places that they built. And then they paid you. Yeah, they paid me. Yeah, well, I love volunteering. I volunteering. <laughs> I guess something. You gave him a decent price, I'd imagine, right? On, on uh, the no, okay. he's Jewish. Were you kidding? <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to deal with them because uh, you have to um, uh, pay a prevailing wage, and uh, the amount of paperwork it takes to get paid uh, because their uh, prevailing wage. You know what prevailing wage is? No. What is that? In California, no. Well, uh, they set the prices based on what the union wages would be. And you uh -huh. have to break down uh, the installer's pay based on how many hours they put in and they have to be paid that plus vacation, plus retirement, plus all these other things that make it very expensive to, to do their work. But um, a lot Can you of turn the job down, Phil, enough? Say if you don't want to get involved with that, can you just say I don't want it? Yeah. But I know I know how to do it, so there's you know, there's no reason to turn it down because a lot of people do turn it down because it's too complicated. So there aren't as many people bidding on the job, and uh, it, it makes it a little more profitable. Now I want to ask Phil this question. This is this is the one. Uh, so how's the election, the recall going out in California? Oh, is he going? I know what's going on out there. Uh, I think Newsom. They're saying that he's up twenty percent. Uh, and so there, you know, there may be no recall and therefore no election. But on the other hand, he's got Kamala Harris uh, coming to uh, support him, and I don't think she's very popular. So uh, maybe he's going to uh, he's going to lose uh, votes because. No, I don't think so. Wishful think thinking, so Phil. Wishful thinking. Yeah, I think the liberals like Kamala Harris, and he's a liberal, and. You know, Most some, of California is liberal. Actually, it's only the big, the big metropolitan area. Well, they, area. they, in fact, they liked her enough to make her senator. But yep, yeah. well, I, you know. I, so it, the apparently, governor is a Republican, right? He, out, no, 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 he's, he's a Democrat. A Democrat. Oh, yeah. Gavin Newsom won by twenty points when he was elected, and, and it pissed off the Republicans so bad they started a recall that same day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, by the way, he is a ten point one percent to the good, uh, and that's according to uh, uh, five thirty eight dot com, which is what's his name that uh, uh, the guy who always does very good job. Nate, of, huh? Nate. Uh, Nate. Nate something. Yeah, Nate. We'll just uh, call him Nate. Nate like Silverman. That. Nate Silverman. Is that? Is that the uh, voters or uh, no that's a, that's an actual yeah I guess it's likely voters um, it, you but should it, look at it Phil they, they they early on said Trump would lose the uh, the 2020 election and they were right yeah Fix when they said and that. it used to be that you would look at all these different uh, polls that he uses to make up his poll and there was one I can't remember it was a really right wing one and it, it said remove was like 10% or something, plus 10. Now every one of them is keep. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I don't think you're going to see Newsom getting kicked out of office. Newsom has raised $73 million as a comparison to uh, Elder's $13 million. Uh, so he's got some big money. Newsom has some big money support behind him. Well, he should. You know, yep. the whole thing is, you got to admit, Phil, it's stupid. Okay, just, you know, is it worth $300 million to the state of California to go through this nonsense? Yeah, I, you know. Hmm? If it's so wonderful, how come it's only for governor? Why, why couldn't they do a recall on senators? Why couldn't they do recall on congresspeople? Uh, 
Yeah, why don't they start with Matt Gates? I think the first thing that should be done as He's soon as this nonsense is over oh, with sorry. is do away with the recall thing. It's just insane. The, o now, the only thing you want to recall somebody from California, you want to start with Kevin McCarthy. Well, but no, but if, you, if, if, if let me say this about recalling that if you're going to have a recall situation, good, go ahead, have a recall situation, but it, don't do it as a recall, do it as a um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what, what, you, huh? Vote of no confidence, a vote of no confidence, or uh, uh, just uh, uh, you know, vote him out of office and when his term comes up, yeah. You know, it's a lot less expensive. You had, it was, I'm out of it tonight. I don't know why I can't think straight. But we had uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, I can't, I don't know where I was going with this. Forget it. I'm I, in really Al bad shape. What? Newsom has done damage to the state of California. Okay. Oh, and really? COVID hasn't? No, no, this is not a whataboutism, Vernon. Uh, I'm asking, you know, it, 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 does, has Newsom damaged California uh, in, 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 in the ways that they're claiming? I guess homelessness. Uh, I don't, know, I don't think he's responsible. Homelessness was here before he came along. Yeah. yeah. But, he, you know, what has he done to eradicate it? What can You're never going to eradicate homelessness. Nothing. What, what do you do? How would you do it, Phil? Well, I, I would start by helping Monday morning quarterbacking. I'm asking him to do here. Go ahead. By actually creating uh, uh, help for the homeless that gets them off the street. And uh, oh, gee, that is a, that's an unusual idea, Phil. Not done. Huh? The is is they're spending? I think they spent seventy three thousand. Is that the number, Alan? Per homeless person in San Francisco. Somewhere around there, 73, 78, it kind of surprised me. Now, how much of that money actually goes to the homeless people? Very little. Very the, little. It's been it's housing them during COVID. Yes, but most of it is spent on administration to... No, most of it's spent on the hotels they're staying in. No, most of them aren't in hotels. They're on the street. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. The, 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 this 78, that, it was just news today is what you probably heard. And it, what they're doing is they've they've rented a bunch of hotel rooms, like they have in other states. And it, San Francisco says now that they have seventy four percent or seventy five percent fully vaccinated, it's time to you know for the homeless to move on to find them other housing and not take up the hotels in the hotels they're staying in. It's costing them a lot of money every month to house these people and feed them and everything else. Before COVID, it was about sixty thousand a year. I never heard. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, and I, I've done work for companies that make their money by uh, administrating programs in San Francisco. Uh, I did floor covering work, but uh, so I sort of saw what these people were doing, and they have an industry around homelessness. So why eradicate homelessness if you have an industry that supports all these other people? It's kind of like drugs, uh, you know, uh, the uh, a big pharma. They don't want uh, to cure the common cold. There's too much money to be made in, in, in getting cold medicine uh, off the shelves and into people's tummies, you know? I agree with, I agree with Phil for once. And what about yeah. private prisons too, Phil? Well, you know, for-profit prisons i yeah I, I you know that's the same kind of thing as uh you know they is an industry that's created and they don't want uh their they don't want to lose their uh, trough to feed at so you know and it just becomes bigger and bigger with more administration and more uh, uh so so one point for newsom and phil just made a point Newsom got rid of most of the for-profit prisons in the state early in, him. His, early in his thing. He saw how much profit there was in it, so he said, hey, the state could be making Right, right. And so we're in agreement that Newsom's done something good in your book. You know, I don't think any of them are good. Uh, you well, know, wait a minute, but you just said he didn't do anything good, and now you're saying things he did that were good. 
asked Alan what has Newsom done that has damaged the state. I didn't say he didn't do anything good. Uh, so, but we're having. Well, I think certainly his biggest no no and the biggest thing that he's responsible for is uh, feeding the coffers of the French laundry. One night. <laughs> One night, yeah. That wasn't him. That was uh, the um, lobbyists that he uh, that he kowtows to because they paid for the dinner. Do you it, think... It's no, no different for Trump when he was president? Uh, I don't think presidents can take that. Oh, really? Of. Oh, yeah. really? Well, what? They just never have gone out and tried to find out how much uh, Trump was doing. I mean, Trump was... I don't think he paid for anything while he was in office. You know, I understood that presidents weren't even allowed to have cash, that, that, they, that they couldn't buy anything. Why? How can, where do they buy things? Well, where, you know, where? Tell me, Phil. I bet if you put 20 bucks in Biden's pocket right now, okay, and come back a month from now, that 20 bucks will still be there. Yeah. Uh, in God, it should say on the top of the money, in God we trust, Trump pays cash. No, they can't even drive a car. Once they're a president, they're not allowed to drive a right. car. No, they're not. They're allowed to the drive fact that uh, uh, Seinfeld did, uh, not Seinfeld, but uh, yeah, Seinfeld did one of his people in cars getting coffee with, yes. with, Trump, with uh, Obama. Obama. And uh, he, they had him. They had a car, and um, he said, "You want to drive?" And he says, "I can't. They won't let me." Yep. Now, um, then they had to go around that oval in front of the White House. Biden drove uh, a car at the Ford plant. It was a publicity. Yeah, yeah or, uh, but that was on a tra track. Yeah. Well, like a Disney ride. <laughs> no, it was a lightning pickup truck. Mm -hmm. Yes. The electric pickup truck. Yep. Yeah, what it was. Have you seen you know? the Mustang? Uh, it looks like a Tesla. The the electric Ford Mustang. Yeah, who's do, do you know who's doing the voice on those commercials? Uh, who? Uh, what's his name? The black actor that did uh, Luther. Uh, oh, Idris Elba. Idris Elba. I could swear it's his voice. You know. But um, and you know the cars. I I I. I'm in, an, I'm in an apartment building, and there's a, a big uh, couple of levels of parking mm -hmm. in the apartment. And this morning, I went to get in my car, and I hear these tires squealing, but no engine. So what's happening is there's these silent machines running around called hybrids and, uh, and electric mm -hmm. and, uh, You can't hear them. <clears throat> Recording in there so that you know you can. They should have some kind of noise in there so that people can hear them coming, right? You know. A lot of people get ran over by Priuses. They oh, they didn't hear it. You know, if if though there's a car called a Toyota Mirai, and uh, that's a hydrogen car, and I've been kind of intrigued by the the hydrogen. I love my car, and I I don't I wouldn't sell it unless I couldn't drive. What it. kind is it? Uh, it's a Toyota FJ Cruiser. It looks like a 1970s Toyota or a Jeep or something. Is like. it is it uh, hybrid or what? It's a V6. Uh, it, it's actually, I've had it 10, 11 years. I, I love this car. I, I mean, there isn't another car on the road that I would want to drive. They don't make it anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a model that is a collector's it? item. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're worth at least ten thousand dollars. Oh, so it's a PT Cruiser is the one you're talking about? No, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. The FJ Cruiser was a limited edition uh, okay. sport utility vehicle. That oh, Toyota okay. Made. All right, I didn't. Four wheel know. drive. But they're neat. They're neat vehicles. What do they call those cars that they uh, have at the car show that they never intend to make? It's uh, not an experimental, but uh, uh, you know, they just make prototype. 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 Yeah, it was a prototype, and then uh, they decided to make it, which is you know. Uh, totally I don't know if anybody remembers this, but I was a kid, so my father used to get a job every year as a musician at a thing that GM did. 
and it was a traveling show that went around the country called Motorama. Does anybody remember that? I, I know that name. Yeah, yeah. And they would come to town and they would show you all the futuristic cars that they were coming up with, none of which ever showed up on, in the dealerships. Never. They, they changed. They decided to make heart valves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's what the FJ Cruiser was. It was one of those uh, futuristic cars, which was a throwback on a, on a, on a model from the, you know, from the 50s and 60s and 70s. And they, they modernized it. And everybody said, oh, we love it. And then they started making it and it didn't sell. <laughs> and it was just the, the wrong car at the wrong time. Now they stopped making them in 2015 and everybody wants it. I, I, maybe two, three times a week, somebody leaves a card on my windshield. Do you want to sell? Uh, and no, I, you know, I, I wouldn't. But the Toyota Mirai is a uh, place in the Bay Area where you can get the hydrogen fuel. And if the Toyota Mirai wasn't so ugly, uh, I, I would think about getting one. Right. right. You know, right. Exactly. Where you, you can, can get hydrogen one. gas station around the corner from us. You can get yeah. hydrogen. True. And stuck. How are you going to get back? Yeah. They're around. I just bought a, a new car, which was a which is a hybrid. Yeah. What'd you and get? And it was a, a Honda CRV, oh. which, which is kind of the same car I had before, except I had two hundred and eighty thousand miles on it, and uh, and uh, I I wanted the opportunity for uh, save gas, you know, the hybrid. Yeah. What? Yes, in Connecticut, in California, I'm paying about four seventy for regular. No, oh, Jesus wow. Christ! You better off walking. You better, you're better off walking. <laughs> yeah, holy shit! I was thinking about getting a car that uses water. You know, yeah. three hundred nine. Well, you know, three hundred nine in Kentucky. I haven't owned a car since two thousand three. What, what, what are they charging in Connecticut? Can I finish what I was saying? The the. the no, forget it. This stuff I get like three to three dollars. Three, and Alex has a car and paid for gas since two thousand three, right? I haven't had a car since two thousand three. Yeah, uh, you know, if I needed a car, I would rent one. And now I'm afraid to rent them because I'm afraid I don't remember how to drive. Well, I can't remember themselves. I can't, Alex. I can't remember how to do this show. <laughs> what? They'll, they'll drive themselves. Uh, you know, there's been rental cars. <laughs> gone out of business and now car renting a car is very expensive much mm -hmm. more than it to be and you can't even get them uh and people go to hawaii and hawaii everybody rents a car not right now you can't get them uh and you know rent, rent have has anybody else heard about you know the shortage of car rentals well, i heard I, they were hmm? oh, no, no, i heard they were having a problem with a car plant they can't get uh Chips or something in cars. That's right. right. That's yeah, right. yeah. Uh, they can't. I guess the rare earth. No, it has nothing. No, to do no, with no. It has to do with COVID. Uh, Co COVID. Yeah. COVID. The, most of the chips come out of China. COVID hit that area hard. They had to close down the factories, and they've never caught up. Actually, it's not the one in China. There is no. one in Taiwan. Okay. It's there NSI or something like that, and they are the main chip maker in the world. Okay, and uh, they uh, they were uh, uh, main chip maker in the world, and they're they're way behind. That's so, the problem. Yeah, Ford just announced today that they're only going to build their fast moving vehicles. Um, but, you know, like the, the Ford F one hundred and fifty and the van that they use for service and. You know they're hiring cars that they make something on. It isn't worth wasting the chips on a right. on a little. Hey Jack. Or, hey, hey Jack's you. back, folks. Oh, Jack's back. Oh. Hi Jack. And uh, they uh, they were uh, uh, main ship maker in the world, and they're they're way behind. Uh, That's kind of like we just heard that a minute ago. Yeah, we just heard that a minute ago. <laughs> Jack, hey. and we might hear it again a minute from now. You know what would be cool if they'd have stopped using all these chips and computers and started making cars simple again? 
that, uh, probably like yeah, those like ones. That's, probably like, like the that's going to happen. Like the one on the Flintstones. Yeah, yeah. you just move your feet, Phil. Yeah, yeah, where you just move your feet. <laughs> uh, you 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 go back to Los Angeles and see the smog in the air again. Good, 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 good shoes. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I, the army should go back to the cavalry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They should have swords. Yes, Jack. Hey there. I just want to say I'm back, but also heard you guys talking about gas prices. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to make you sick. Dallas. Our gas here in uh, the part of the country that I live in, near Dallas, right now, and this has gone up, is two seventy a gallon. That's good. Now, why do you think that is? Is it the taxes in the state of Texas? No, or? they have. They make the gas there. They make the oil there. Refineries. The refineries yeah. are there. I got Chevron in my backyard, Shell, all of the... Uh, uh, all no, you, of the you have the refineries, but you don't have the pumping. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Quite big, a bit. Big difference. Morning. Big difference. Well, if they refine <clears throat> it, they have to, you know... Yeah, but they, don't, but they don't have to They don't have to send it all the way to California to get refined, where you have to get it sent to California to get it refined. Am I right, guys? Am I wrong about this? I don't know. That's it. That's it. There are, uh, near well, Dallas, there well, are that's not exactly three refineries right. that I know of. Yeah. One of the largest so ports in the, in the world for importing petroleum is Houston. Yeah, all you got to do is drive through California Central Valley, and you'll and Southern California you'll see oil pumps, not like they are in Texas, but they're here. Yeah, yeah. We got the offshore. Well, we had yeah, the, the offshore stuff. You also yeah. in California you have something they probably don't have in Texas because you have a governor down there who doesn't give a shit about such things, uh, but in California you have taxes upon taxes upon taxes. We're paying at, close at, to seventy cents a gallon in taxes right now. Is it seventy cents a gallon? I close thought it was more gallon. than that. I thought it was a larger at, percentage. At the federal or the state? A uh, federal. Federal. Well, I wonder what the state tax is. I don't know. Probably a dollar a gallon by the time you're done. Mm -hmm. Hey, but look, you know, you guys have decent highways. No, we don't. No, we don't. Well, the thing Not is, in the, the Bay last area. Time, the last time I was in the Bay Area, I was still surprised. You know. I live near a major, major highway that is a, uh, uh, a U.S. highway, you know, came along during uh, the uh, 50s, mm -hmm. and uh, you can't hardly drive your car on it anymore because it is so badly kept. Well, oh, is that? Okay, I thought you were going to say it was so filled with people. It. Well, it's filled with people. Yeah, California, the highways are not in good condition, and that, oh. and and the reason we voted for these tax increases on gas was because they said they were going to fix the highways, and you know. Well, fixing a highway is not an easy venture. Like on the, uh, uh, I live off of a minor state highway that goes, you know, like just a few blocks from my house. They have been rebuilding that for 20 years and this is a, supposedly a state that we say we can get it done well that's a damn lie i've been hardly a decent freeway in an area of uh we're right at about seven million people in the dallas fort worth area and i can't think of a major highway that isn't in bad repair around here. Yeah, you ever watch uh, those guys working uh, on the highway or even, uh, you know, for any any of these government projects? You see six guys standing around a hole. Each of them has a shovel in one hand, a coffee cup in the other, and a cigarette in their mouth. How well, much? I, I don't see that here, Phil. Well, you know, I, you know, I don't see it here. What I do see is a lot of streets and highways that need repair that never get it. Now, uh, US 35, which is the uh, uh, the um, uh, highway that was built here around me, and it's and I live about less than two miles from it. They have been working on it 
practically as long as I have been in Texas, and that will be 51 years next month. Yeah. You know, the Golden Gate Bridge, they start painting it on one end. And they, well, they've been they... doing that for years, Phil. Yeah. Ever since I was a kid, they start at one end, they go to the other end, mm -hmm. then they go back to the beginning and they do it again. Because it takes them about two and a half, three years, I think, to do the whole bridge, or maybe even longer than that. And by the time they finish it, because of where it is, it the paint has eroded and so on and so forth. So they have to keep on painting it. Salt, by, the, salt. by the way, I, California is only the second highest the gas tax. Oh, where's the first? New York? Nope. Pennsylvania. Uh, really? Really? Wow. 58, 58 .6 cents a gallon in Pennsylvania. In California, it's 53.3. .3. In New York, it's 40.45. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, the amount in California isn't both state and federal, is it? No, that's just the state tax. Right, just the state. Okay, so we're over a dollar a gallon. Well, uh, uh, Vernon, what is the tax in Texas? Uh, they don't list Texas, they just have the top five. And the top five are Pennsylvania, California, Washington State, New Jersey, and New York. Wow. Yeah, I know it must be low because uh, when the I can, average. The average uh, is 28.85 cents per gallon, the average gas tax, uh, all states averaged. Well, as I was about to say, I know it's pretty low because when I came here, there were pretty good highways throughout the state. Some of the best highways that I've seen in the South, and I've lived most of my adult life in Southern states, and I thought, damn, this is doing pretty good, but not anymore. When the lowest the gas taxes, the, the lowest gas taxes, Alaska, and then Hawaii, and then Virginia. Not surprising, you know. Alaska Hawaii. is is a major oil producing uh, uh, state now. I have a uh, former girlfriend that lives in Hawaii, uh, lives in Alaska. They and had to go that far to get away from you, is it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> right. But uh, she gets her. I think she still gets this. I haven't talked to her quite some time, but uh, she gets a tax, or rather a check from the Alaska government for the oil production that they do in Alaska. She gets a piece of the, of the oh, tax. Oh yeah, there is, uh, there is money that goes back to the, uh, to the it, citizens uh, yeah. from the tax, uh, the tax that's put on oil that they make money and they t turn it back to the people. Yeah, what, Texas what, and Oklahoma is only 20 cents a gallon state tax. Oh, really? Well, they believe in oil. You know, it's kind of like when I used to go through the South and you could buy cigarettes for 10 cents a pack, you know, because those states produce tobacco. Meanwhile, uh, they're now $10 a pack. It's amazing. I mean, I'm glad I quit smoking when I did. I couldn't afford to smoke now. I, I quit when it was 50 cents for Marlboros. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I used to smoke those sherman cigarettellos and they were a dollar a box you know they used to arrest people with the shermans because they would lace them with a pcp and uh and if you ask them uh they were high and you'd say uh, you well, know it, what lace you... With, why would i lace mine with pcp <laughs> it's angel dust isn't it you know, what are you on and the guy says i just had a sherm you know because i they, never heard of that why, why, would they, why would they? Why would they? Why would they pick bond. Sherman's, a particularly expensive cigarette, oh, expensive. to put a particularly expensive drug into? Wouldn't you use a cheap cigarette as your delivery system? Oh, yeah. Phil yeah. used Marlboros. Yeah, they. It was called. The, they say I was smoking Sherm, and then uh, you know I, I arrested this. This, this from the guy who feels that today, uh, um, uh, our president was at uh, Camp David. Yes. Yeah, when he wasn't. When he was a, in New Jersey and in... Uh, in the East Elmhurst. In East Elmhurst, yes. Tim, 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 in New Tony. Jersey and New York. By Tony's house. Alex, don't be <coughs> filled with reality. You know, let him be in that never-never land that he prefers. Right, uh, right. Well, yeah, okay. Mm. And I don't know if you could consider Camp David a vacation. 
It, but, you know, you that really is, the, is, is a, uh, uh, a secondary White House. Oh, okay. So when you but, go there, you've got to work all day. You, if you're going on vacation, don't you want to go somewhere where you don't have to work? Yeah, like it's warm too. Like, like Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mar-a-Lago. Press conference at the Camp David. He's sitting at a big conference meeting. Uh, it was kind of like Gabnet, you know. He was uh, looking at a TV. Uh, but, you know, he could have been in his pajamas. You know. Well, every but, president in uh, your lifetime and mine has held meetings at Camp David. Well, I don't know. Trump mainly did it at, like Vernon said, at Mar-a-Lago. No, that's because he was getting golf little, games. That's yeah. because he was getting a little kickback from what he was charging. Or, or, or Bedminster. He, he liked to go to Bedminster, too. But prior to, uh, what was it, 58, uh, uh, who was there? Eisenhower, that, uh, that's when Camp David was called Camp David because uh, it was... Uh, well, it yep. was named after his, uh, his uh, uh, son. Yes. Uh, w did it exist prior to Eisenhower? Uh, the yeah. Yeah. Did, did it? Yeah. Okay. What was it called then? I don't remember. I mean, you know, I was a kid, but I remember my grandfather saying, oh, they're meeting at uh, that place just outside of Washington. That they used to was be it, a military camp. I think it was, was it Idlewild? No, that's an airport in, the, uh, in New York. Or yeah, Jersey. Idlewild was... Uh, it's called JFK now. Was JFK, yeah. Yeah. That was made famous on Car 54, Where Are You? Yeah, well, I mean, Idlewild, uh, uh, yeah, because uh, uh, it became JFK in honor of JFK once he died. What did we name in, in honor of JFK that we took the name back? Cape Canaveral. That's right. Oh, that's a good one. It, so it, became, it, came, it was, was Cape original. Kennedy for a while, and then they took it back, and it's now Cape Canaveral again. Camp David was originally built in 1938. And was originally called High H I slash Cat Catison C A T O. Catoctin. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. How's that pronounced? Uh, that pronounced? Uh, Catoctin. High Catoctin. High Catoctin. Sounds like some kind of drug you'd take. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like some kind of digestive relief. It sounds like some. It sounds like <laughs> something. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what, what's that company that was doing all the bad drugs? Uh, Purdue. Sounds like a drug Purdue. Purdue Pharma. Do. Yeah. Don't mention. It was actually built by the WPA. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't mention drugs around me after what I went through last week. Yeah. You, uh, is that, you still have a bump on your head there, I can see. Yes. Uh, I uh, uh, finally took the uh, Band Aid off today. The reason uh, you guys haven't heard me. Uh, since last Tuesday, I don't think they, I don't think I heard you Tuesday. Did they? Yeah, I did a show Tuesday. Did you do a show Tuesday? Okay. And 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 Wednesday evening after I was having dinner, I stood up, and I told Donna I'm feeling dizzy. And the next thing I know, for the second time in two weeks, I uh, was on the floor, and this time I hit my head on the uh, dining room table. Wow. Wound up in the hospital for uh, three days with a contusion. But here's the best part about you in the hospitals. Yes. Mm -hmm. They couldn't find you one. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> they finally That's... had to take you and have you stay at Scott's place. Yeah, I was 35 <laughs> miles from home because there were no available hospital rooms in my county, mm -hmm. in Dallas. Yeah. I don't know whether they checked Tarrant County, where Fort Worth is, but uh, I didn't have a, uh, I stayed in an emergency room all night the first night I was there, and they didn't get me to a patient room until uh, the afternoon of the next day. And what was the excuse for this? Well, the excuse for the rooms? Yeah. No availabilities because of the COVID-19 thing. Yeah. But Alex Bennett, 
whose mother said he could have been a doctor if he had studied a little harder. My mother never said that. She didn't. My mother said that to me. That's another bad Jew joke by you. No, wait a minute. I tell you, my mother said that to me. She wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. When I decided I was going uh, to, to be a radio announcer, she said, why don't I tell my friends that you're a piano player in a whorehouse in the oil patch in Texas? It's more respectable. Yeah. But Alex Bennett <laughs> told me, uh, uh, when I told him what had happened, I'd gotten busy. I thought I was going to pass out and uh, didn't pass out this time. He said, have them check your, your medications. And sure enough, for um, 11 years, I have taken two drugs that will lower your blood pressure, make you dizzy, make you pass out. Mm -hmm. Is that Lipitor or no? And, hmm? Were you on Lipitor? No, I was on Lisinopril. Blood pressure medicine. I was on Lisinopril, and I was, uh, and I'm still on um, uh, Melitropil, Metatropil, which is a. You know uh, what? What? Why those drugs didn't weren't good for you? Why because none they? of them sound like a word Jerry Lewis would say. Uh, yeah, Metatropil used to be on. Riboflavin. <laughs> he used to sing the song at the end to tell them. But the really funny thing is, I have a uh, I have a cousin who's a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. So when I get home, I call her, and she says, "Well, tell me all the drugs you're on." And I said, "Well, they took me off the lisinopril because they said I really didn't need it. I've been taking it for eleven years." And and I ran down the list. She says, "Well, I got news for you. There's one more that you're still on." It can lower your blood pressure. So I'm seeing my doctor tomorrow. Yeah. Say, what the fuck is going on here? And um, the one I'm still on is the old man P pill, Flomaxin. Uh, it, yeah, Flomax. 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 Yeah. Flomax. Yeah. Well, the thing Flomax. is that that's yeah, that's a problem with me. I've been taking this uh, right off later. No, I've been taking. Uh, uh, right. What is it? Uh, right. Pregabalin. Pregabalin. See, um, <laughs> and and I've been taking that, and then I've been taking a generic Flomax, mm -hmm. and what it does is it does lower your blood pressure, and I've been feeling kind of lightheaded and so on yeah. for the last week or so, and then I stopped it a couple of days ago, and today's the first day I haven't really felt lightheaded. They Ooh. took me off of the lisinopril that I was on. Uh, Last. By the way, if you're a young person trying to listen to this program, I apologize. Go hey, ahead. We're hey, we're, we're doing a public service here, man. Hey. We're warning young people. Well, they said they keeps my them. blood pressure under control. Well, Phil was trying to say something, and Jeff wanted to say something. Uh, Jack, I'm taking Metro... Metro oh. Yeah. Your heart, isn't it? Yeah. See, I had a, uh, I had a heart, I had a quad bypass. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's talk to the, the, the expert on hearts. Yeah, because Mr. Jeff. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. You have to turn your mic on. Mic on. Mike, turn your mic on, Jeff. I always do that. Yeah. Anyway, excuse me. But here's the question. All of you guys have heart problems. I don't. Yes, I'm okay. At a different <laughs> level or not. Either you have it now or it's coming in the, in the Oh, future. Oh, stop it. No, no, I'm coming. <laughs> so here's the question. You're just hoping because then you'll sell more of the pumping machine. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go there. to see your cardiologist. Yeah. Okay. And does he take out this little scope and he sticks it over your heart and checks your heart? Well, I have a, my, my, my uh, uh, internist, my main doctor, my the guy refers me everywhere is also a cardiologist, and yeah. every every couple of years he does a, uh, a thing on me uh, to check because I have a uh, stenosis, but okay. it's a very mild stenosis. He told me at the rate it's going, it'll be dangerous in 50 years, so don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I said, well, I plan to make it that far. So Jeff, they have a name for that device. It's called a stethoscope. Right. <laughs> so, do your doctors have one? Yes. Do they I use them? Cardiologists. Yeah. No, they I just wear it around their neck to look like doctors. I go to Kaiser. They they don't have them. 
Oh, well, that's doctor assisted suicide. I heard. No, no, I have a new, a new doctor, and I'm talking about a Jewish doctor with a yarmulke. Wow, you got a good one. That's what it is. I always look with school, but no one. scope. Oh, really? Wow. And Pam says to him, "Why the hell did you test his heart?" She goes, "He says we don't do that anymore." Really? We have you all electronically connected. Yeah. Oh, this feels not yeah, as long as you got a Wi-Fi signal, Jeff, you're okay. I guess so. <laughs> Jeff, last month, uh, before all of this stuff started happening to me, yes, sir. I had a heart stress test with my cardiologist who said, golly, you've lost 35 pounds and your heart sounds better than I've ever heard it sound. And you know, you pass the whole thing. And this uh, cousin of mine, who, who's the pharmacist said, you lost 35 pounds since the first of the year. That also lowered your blood pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so- You, you I, look a lot thinner. Yeah, his face. That's good. Oh yeah, you know, uh, Alex, so you will know this. I weigh only 15 pounds more than I weighed when I graduated from college. Now. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, no, really, that's good. Not me. Did you consciously go on a diet? Well, uh, what happened was, you know, be, even though the governor of Texas said, go any damn where and die <laughs> on your own, uh, my <laughs> wife said, <laughs> you shouldn't be going out and eating with your buddies for lunch three or four times a week. Uh -huh. So I stayed home. Cut up and food. you know, for most of us old codgers, which Alex doesn't like for us to talk about, uh, we start eating less anyway, and so I just started losing. What do you, you know, mean I don't like? What do you mean I don't like God, talking about? I can't about wait till I, that happens. Me, to me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, when they told me what I weighed last month, I said, "Well, wait a minute. I only weighed." 13, 14 pounds. Well, I've gained weight because of the procedure that I yeah, had. Yeah. And also because of the pregab pregabalin. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you're you're pretty tall. What are you, about 6'2"? Who, me? Jack. Jack? How tall are you, Jack? How tall am I? Yeah. 6'1". Uh, well, I wish I was 6'1". Okay. So I got no one. neck. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about my body is I have no neck. I look like I do, a, but it's getting to look like a turkey now. <laughs> yes, I know. Hey, hey, but I'd settle for that, man. I have no neck. That's okay. Really? Yeah. At least you're a foot taller than Tony. Yeah, I wish I was six one. I take six feet. <laughs> How tall are you? How tall I'm are you? Like five eight. But I always wanted to be tall because I like to play basketball, and I can never really. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't no, forget that. Me. No, but I mean, if, at least on the playground, if I was like, well, I wish I was about 5'11", it'd be a little better. I can, you know, I, I, it'd be easy to get your shot off. I always thought it was a big, it was always cheating. I always thought a no, basketball team to you. get really good. Well, it made me be a better ball handler. That's the only way I can really get open yeah. and handle the ball. Really hey, get with Tony, you. I feel sorry for you, but I'm the only black guy in America who can't play basketball. Are you you don't even like to play? Oh, I, love, <laughs> I miss playing basketball. I just, I just play 21 now. Or just take but but but, she, but he's a great rapper so you know all right that makes up yeah that makes up for it. anyway there here comes the theme song and jack you better get out of here so that you can go do your show hey, wait a minute i i worked all week to get back here now you're gonna fire me catch you at the intersection just a bit <laughs> okay bye let's say goodbye to him hey thank you uh, phil for joining us and staying with us and uh we enjoy the pictures in back of you uh, that one I bet we haven't like. heard half of what he said. No. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and thanks to Vernon Nunn, and thank you to uh, Oh Jeff just disappeared. Uh, uh, goodbye to Alan, and goodbye to Tony. And hopefully we'll see you all back here yeah. again tomorrow night, along with maybe even more people. Maybe. Ver what? Uh, what? what you maybe what, uh, what you were called? Uh, Charlie. He knew he was doing. I saw him on your show yesterday, Monday. Who? Charlie. 
Oh, Charlie, maybe Charlie Wallace. Baseball. Oh, Charlie yeah. Wallace. Yeah, well, we, we, we can only hope. Anyway, that's it. Everybody's going away, and I don't let me say goodbye to them. Goodbye, Vernon. Goodbye, Alan. Goodbye, uh, goodbye Phil. Alex. Goodbye, to, to uh, Jeff. And goodbye to all of you. Everybody wave goodbye, except I think Jeff is frozen, so he's not going to. Oh, now he might wave goodbye. Anyway, five that's minutes, it, ladies wait. and gentlemen. That's our uh, that's our panel for tonight. They're all on their way out of here. Uh, not a large panel, but a good panel and a good discussion and good talking and all of that. Hey, listen, uh, tomorrow night, uh, like 8.30, uh, uh, the sports guy posts his show. That's the franchise MC, And then we'll be back again at 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time. Uh, wait a minute, is it daylight time anymore? No, I think we're back to regular time. Uh, <laughs> in any event... As always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And on top of everything else, I really want you to go out and make sure you get vaccinated, okay? All right. Good night, everybody. Or at least wear a, a napkin over your face. Uh, see you later. Bye. <laughs>